Coming up on Naperville News 17. City budget discussions for the upcoming year begin. A new connection between Naperville and Plainfield and a bit of spare change can mean a sweet gift to charity. Hello everyone, I'm Kim Pierce. Thanks for joining us for this week's Naperville News. The 2019 city budget discussions are underway. Naperville News 17's Casey Krajewski has more. Naperville City Council met with city staff for the first of three scheduled budget discussions. A large part of the meeting was spent talking about the investments the city makes in service levels, especially public safety. From the re residents of this community, we know that they value their public safety services and they appreciate them from citizen surveys with satisfaction rates at 94% for fire and 86% for police, far exceeding regional and national values overall. Part of the new budget recommendation included the creation of a new position, Police Department Deputy Director, which would cost the city $147,000 per year. The fire department also requested replacing one of their ladder trucks, a $1.3 million cost as the current truck costs the city around $50,000 in repairs each year. Some council members questioned whether these costs were necessary in a year where the city budget is expected to increase by about $10 million. Others felt the extra investment into public safety was worthwhile. I'm fine with what I heard from public safety. I think clearly we need to have a strong police and fire. I think given the opioid and mental health issues that we are dealing with now, I think what they proposed, I mean, to me, I was, I was satisfied with it. A new service that was discussed involves implementing software to allow the Municipal Center to hold administrative hearings. This would cost the city $95,000, but would create savings and convenience over time. Having on-site adjudication of these sorts of violations will not only be convenient to our officers who are staffing that, but to all of our customers who will no longer have to go up to Wheaton or take a day off work to process those adjudications. Staff said they will return with answers to many of Council's questions at the next meeting. For Naperville News 17, I'm Casey Krajewski. The next budget meeting is scheduled for November 13th, where topics like economic development, neighbor settlement, and the library will be discussed. Some local students recently pitched some out-of-this-world thinking to today's top engineering, science, and business leaders. Naperville News 17's Christine Lena has the story. And we can start actually tapping into the moon's resources, which leads us to our goal of full sustainability. A moon transportation system was just one idea recently brought to a Nokia stage, proving that the next big thing on the moon isn't so far away. So I've always loved engineering and it's kind of research projects have been a big part of my high school life and my friends do this as well. And our teacher actually brought this to our attention. They're like, oh, you could do this project and just look into um, a possible mission to the moon. So we thought that would be really interesting and we just started digging right into it and investigating. Pratik's team Sornet joined seven other teams of students from districts 203 and 204, presenting proposals to a panel of judges in a Shark Tank style competition. It was all for a shot at being a part of TEDx Naperville. Well, I definitely love TED and especially all the TEDx talks we learn in school and just being able to stay on the same stage as people who bring new ideas to the table. It just, it's very inspiring to us, especially considering when we're entering the first stages into our careers and our colleges, being able to say, hey, I was on a TEDx stage. It's definitely an appealing um, aspect. After having only three minutes each to pitch their out-of-this-world proposals, the teams answered hard-hitting questions from the judges, who all come from the science, engineering, and business industries. I, I think you know, overall, you know, it was a it was a great experience for us in terms of you know seeing that freshness, the aliveness of like you know a bunch of high school students. After I've gone through the whole process, it's pretty impressive what the students were able to do in a short amount of time. The amount of research they taught me a lot. I learned a lot about the moon, that's for sure. But, you know, I was really impressed with the work that they put in. In the end, first place was given to Nequa Valley's Team Space Bricks for their pitch to use the moon's rocks and materials for building infrastructure. The team gets to go to TEDx Naperville on November 10th to present their idea at the Nokia table. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Christine Lena. If you want to attend TEDx Naperville and see Team Space Bricks idea there, you can check out the event's website. The SECA Commission is working on a new system for evaluating projects. Naperville News 17's Blaine Irwin has the details. 
the SICA Commission wrapped up their final funding recommendations for City Council. While SICA's budget increased by $51,000 thanks to a 2% inflator and a rollover from underspent funds combined, there was an $87,000 increase in city service requests. That led the commission to recommend a few events, like the last fling and rib fest, receive less than full funding for their city service requests. So we've completed our agenda item regarding a rec unified recommendations. It'll be given to the city council. The city council will have a workshop uh, in January. January. In January an opportunity to f have further discussion about it with a final decision by City Council following that, at another time following that meeting. Now, the SICA Commission is looking forward with the draft of objective criteria and a point system to judge applications with, which City Council asked them to create earlier this year. Now we're going to take the criteria that we've talked about, apply them to the projects that we've already made the recommendations on, see what those results come out to be, and from that, try to draw some conclusions about changes in the metrics we need to make. The current draft of the scoring system has five categories, quality, community benefit, self-evaluation, feasibility, and artistic benefit. Each project will have a rating given for each of those categories, weak, fair, good, strong, and excellent, with a corresponding number score of one to five respectively. But it's not yet clear how that score could impact funding decisions, and that has some commissioners worried. I want to know kind of what my numbers are going to, how, what kind of an impact, because if I've got somebody calling me and says, I got a 75, but yet I only got, you know, 30% of what I asked for, what do I got to do to get 50%? You know, do I ask for more money? The commission will test the current draft of the system on 10 projects from the last two years. Then they'll compare those scores with funds that were given out to learn more about how the system works and to make more changes. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Blaine Irwin. City Council will have the final say both on the SICA Commission's recommendations and any new evaluation system that could be implemented. After the break, a new grant to make swimming safer. Do you suffer from osteoarthritis, rotator cuff tears, peripheral neuropathy, major ligament injuries, or back and neck pain? If you answered yes, there is a non-surgical treatment option that is eliminating the pain associated with these conditions called platelet-rich plasma therapy. PRP works by harvesting your blood and separating it into smaller components that are injected into the area of injury, aiding the body's natural healing process. Suffer no more. Call us now to see how PRP can help you. It's going to take someplace special to stand out in Freedom Commons, and Shinto Sushi is up to the challenge. You get the highest quality service and amazing ambiance. Shinto Sushi Freedom Commons takes their plate presentation to the next level, from the bento box lunch specials, to the exquisite sashimi plates, to teriyaki platters, to new twists on Japanese classics. Shinto Freedom Commons masters the art of service and Japanese cuisine. Another section of the Normantown Trail will soon be completed. With a scoop of the shovel, the Forest Preserve District of Will County broke ground on a new extension of Normantown Trail. The project consists of a 0.85 mile conversion of Normantown Road north of 119th Street into a 10 foot wide hiking and cycling trail. This is part of a wider 4.7 mile Normantown Trail that will run from 135th Street in Plainfield up to Wolf Road in Naperville. And that also in conjunction with the other other trail networks uh, within the village of Naperville or no village of Plainfield and uh, the city of Naperville th there would be a logical connection between those. It's another step towards a goal of connectivity. Uh, one of the com key components of the village strategic plan is creating pathways and improving connections to this project for further that goal. About 0.15 mile will remain as shared use, so residential vehicles can reach Rockwell Lane from 119th Street. This section of the trail should be complete by July 2019. Late fall is when young coyotes begin leaving their parents in search of their own territory, so don't be surprised if you come across one of these creatures this season. As the leaves fall and greenery becomes sparser, there are a lot fewer places for a coyote to hide. But if you'd like to limit your interactions with these wild animals, 
Make sure they know your yard isn't a source of food. And the best thing you can do is to absolutely not feed them. Uh, you know, even if you're unintentionally having food left out, with, with whether it's pet food or even if you're feeding other wildlife, you want to make sure it's very clean and there's not things left around for them. Because anytime we hear of pretty negative interactions with people and coyotes, it always has to do with food. However, if you do notice coyotes in your area, make sure to accompany your pets on walks and in the backyard as coyotes rarely attack humans. There is a concern if you have a pet dog because coyotes will be naturally interested in other canines, whether it's as a prey source or as comp a potential comp competitor. So they um, might investigate canines. So you wanna be careful about your dogs outside unattended. Though there are a lot of negative stereotypes associated with coyotes, they are an important part of the ecosystem. The coyote active season ends in February when the animals begin breeding. As November begins, the Naperville Police Department is reminding residents to shop smart. Our own Christine Lena tells us more about this month's Safer Naper topic. The holiday season is already upon us, so this month the Naperville Police Department has dedicated Safer Naper to shopping smart. One thing to always keep in mind when you are out shopping is to really practice situational awareness. Be aware of your surroundings and be aware of what's around you so you're able to make uh, good decisions. The NPD suggests carrying only the necessary amount of cash and cards when you're out shopping. And don't carry your social security card with you either. Also too, when you're shopping, you want to make sure that you don't have any valuables or packages in a plain view of your vehicle. So you want to make sure that you put those away. But if you're opting to shop online, there's still lots of ways to stay smart about it. When you're shopping online, make sure that you're going to a trusted website. And when you're checking out, make sure you look for that um, lock icon. That means that you're on a trusted, secure site. The NPD also recommends using credit cards as opposed to debit cards for online shopping, as credit cards provide additional security layers. After you've made your online orders, make sure you know when they'll arrive. So if you can't uh, receive your package, maybe perhaps have a neighbor um, check your doorstep and bring that package in for you so nobody takes it from your doorstep. Another tip, always check your monthly credit card statements and keep an eye out for suspicious or fraudulent charges. Reporting for Naperville News 17, I'm Christine Lena. Throughout the month of November, the NPD and Crime Stoppers will be at local grocery stores on the weekends to hand out information with these safe shopping tips and more. A grant of over $182,000 was recently awarded to the DuPage County Health Department. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission awarded the grant to provide assistance for training and education of pool safety requirements intended to save lives and prevent serious injuries. Technical solutions to prevent suction entrapment drowning incidents that can occur at pools will also be addressed. The main drain cover in the bottom of a typical pool used to be flat and the new uh, drain covers have a kind of a dome shape to them that's so that if somebody swims over that drain and, and, and if their body lands on top of it, water can still get through and then their body won't be trapped to the bottom of the pool and thus you know, potentially drowning. DuPage has about 700 public pools and spas, while there's an estimated 10,000 residential or private pools. The USA Swimming Foundation says this year, from Memorial Day through Labor Day, at least 148 children younger than age 15 fatally drowned in swimming pools or spas in the United States. In Illinois, there were six pool and spa drownings involving children younger than 15 during that same time period. An iron lung was recently here in Naperville. Rotary International's Iron Lung exhibit was outside Maison Sabica for Naperville Rotary Club's latest meeting. The device is one of thousands used to keep people alive during the polio epidemic in the 1950s. Severe cases of the disease would cause serious muscle weakness. Uh, oftentimes it was limbs, arms and legs where children would be, couldn't walk right or use their arms correctly. Uh, in extreme cases it would attack their diaphragms and therefore they couldn't breathe correctly and would need external help breathing and that's what an iron lung does, it is, helps them breathe. Today the machine is nearly obsolete thanks to a global effort to eradicate polio with vaccines. Fewer than 200 cases of polio occurred in four countries worldwide in 2017. Coming up, we'll catch you up on the Halloween happenings around town. 
Since 2001, families and friends have been caught reading positively Naperville. At home, around town, and all over the world. Thanks for reading, in print and online. I think it's really special that Naperville has a community television station devoted to what's happening in Naperville on so many levels, at the citizen resident level, at the government level, at the not-for-profit level, at the business level. We are here covering this vibrant community and, and telling its stories. It's so important, the role we play. We bring a little bit of home to you, no matter where you are or when you want to watch. You can always go to our website, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or any of our social media sites, and find a story about Naperville from Naperville Community Television. The Naperville Senior Center recently got a friendly visit from some young goblins and ghouls. Two, three, go! Preschoolers from Bright Horizons spent some time with the seniors for a day, and both generations dressed up for the occasion. Oh, that's a, that's a real treat. Yeah, the kids enjoy the visit and we enjoy the kids. So it works both ways. Well, I think at our age to see little children just beginning life and enjoying Halloween and everything, it's perfect. The group played games, sang songs, and the kids got to trick or treat with every senior. This is the second year Bright Horizon preschoolers have stopped by the Senior Center for a pre-Halloween visit. And kids got to celebrate Halloween for an extra day on the Riverwalk. If you're happy as Halloween and you know it, say, Trick or Treat! The Riverwalk Amphitheater was packed with kids in costumes celebrating Halloween a day early. The Nichols Library's Halloween on the Riverwalk program featured children's librarians dressed like witches, telling stories with spooky props, and singing songs. The monster on the bus goes roar, roar, roar. The grand finale was a puppet show and of course sweet treats were given out at the end. And on Halloween, trick-or-treaters in the Brookdale neighborhood found some extra Halloween fun. Giant jack-o-lanterns, amazing smoke bubbles, <laughs> and a bonfire make this house a spooky sight. Naperville resident Greg Wyland has slowly built up his collection of Halloween decorations to become one of the scariest houses in the area. We've just kind of, over the years, done more and more. Uh, started off small and just kind of added to it as we've gone on. And my wife and I have just always liked Halloween and just kind of want to give the you know, family something fun to look back on. And... The swinging skeleton uses a motor to constantly move back and forth. But the hardest part of the whole display was actually the window boards. They're basically made out of foam board, one inch thick foam board. Uh, it was pink foam board, you know, four by eight sheets. And they're just carved with a box cutter. And then I do further detail with the wood burner and then paint them. So kind of a lot of steps, but I was happy with the end product. The lights, music, and projector in the window complete the display that has all the trick-or-treaters leaving with a smile. But don't expect a similar display for any other holidays. No, we don't have the storage for other holidays. Just we have enough creative space for one holiday. Only one thing to say to that, boo. As the spooky fun of October ends, the hair raising month of Movember begins. The Naperville Police Department is always concerned with public safety, but this month they're also focusing on public health by taking part in Movember. It's a good way to raise money to create awareness for certain men's health issues. So for the month of November, we're sup suspending our policy uh, with, uh, which prohibits spirits. NPD employees who want to participate will need to donate $50 to the Movember Foundation, which raises money and awareness for men's health issues. The department raised more than $3,000 before the month even started and hopes to continue to build that number by the end of the month. And officers are taking advantage of the rare opportunity to show off their scruff. Most of us have wanted a beard probably I'd say in the last 15, 15 or 10 years at least and 
policy suggests we can't have it, so it's our chance to give it a shot and see what it looks like. I think it's going to be a lot more silver than black. So, <laughs> If you'd like to donate to the police department's fundraiser, you can find their webpage at movember.com. November 11th is Veterans Day, and this year it's also the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. That makes it the perfect time for our own Casey Krajewski to share the history of local war hero Judd Kendall. Oliver Judd Kendall was just 28 years old in 1917 when he enlisted in the Army to fight in World War I. He was assigned to the Army Engineers School and rose to the rank of First Lieutenant. When he was deployed to France, the U.S. was new to the war. Some felt the American troops would struggle with trench warfare and should be used as filler in the British Army. Finally, uh, the British and, and French said, fine, we'll give you this sector of the line across from the village of Cantini, and uh, when you get situated there, that you formulate an attack plan, and if that's successful, then we'll, uh, we'll recognize that you're capable of fighting in this war. It all hinged on the Battle of Cantini. Kendall led a party out onto the battlefield a few nights prior to the scheduled operation to prepare the site for the U.S. troops. And at one point, Judd Kendall heard a noise and uh, asked one of the privates in the group to come with him to investigate, and then he told the private to stay back and wait for him. And the private saw Judd Kendall move off into the darkness, and then he, he heard a noise that sounded like some equipment being dropped, and then he heard nothing. And Kendall did not return. So it was assumed that he had been taken prisoner by the Germans. Kendall's capture was a concern for the entire U.S. military. As an officer, he was aware of the Army's battle plans for Cantini. If the Germans could force him to give up information, it could mean thousands of lives lost. He knew the secrets, as they, as they say, and he kept them. He kept his mouth shut, and uh, he did it to uh, save the attack, save his uh, fellow soldiers, and uh, he gave, paid the ultimate sacrifice. The Battle of Cantini became the U.S.'s first victory in the war. However, Kendall's body was found months later, buried behind enemy lines. In a letter to Kendall's mother, Captain Shipley Thomas wrote that if Kendall had given away intel, 12,000 American lives could have been lost. In my opinion, the gallantry of your son prevented this and saved the American army, he wrote. When the Naperville VFW opened in 1944, it was named in Kendall's honor. Lobbying done by the Post in the 1990s led to Kendall posthumously being awarded the Purple Heart, the Silver Star, and the French Croix de Guerre, a fitting legacy for one of Naperville's greatest veterans. For Naperville News 17, I'm Casey Krajewski. This Veterans Day at 3 p.m., there will be a special program at Carillon with a half hour of patriotic music and the tolling of Big Joe in remembrance of the 100th anniversary of the ending of World War I. Up next, can the Naperville North boys soccer team make its third consecutive trip to state? We'll have the answer and the sectional championship in girls volleyball. Naperville Crime Stoppers. Yes, I'd like to report some suspicious activity in my neighborhood. How does this work? Yes, thanks for calling. Your call is anonymous and I'll not ask for your name. Instead, you'll be identified by a tip number. In a few weeks, call back with the tip number you received, and I will let you know the status of your tip. If an arrest is made, you could receive a reward up to $1,000. How do I get the reward money if you don't know who I am? Well, when you call back, we set up a time and a place to drop the money. You will be safe, and nobody will know you gave Crime Stoppers a tip. Okay, well, here's what's going on. It's been 42 games and over 400 days since Naperville North boys soccer lost their last game. Now the Huskies find themselves one win away from a third straight trip to state as they face Lyons Township in the Super Sectional. Just three minutes into the game, Christian Romano comes running from the line to throw the ball over to Colin Iverson. It goes over his head and Cesar Resendez scores the first goal of the game. Huskies take an early lead 1-0. They manage to hold off the Lions into the second half. But about midway through, Max Bem throws it in. With a light head tap from Skip Locke, Nolan O'Malley tries to knock it in. But of course, Tommy Welch grabs it to keep the lead and the shutout. North holds on for the 1-0 win and will move on to the state semis to face Lake Park at Hoffman Estates. Moving on to the volleyball courts, after Bennett Academy topped Wabonzi Valley in three sets and Naperville North defeated Lockport,
the Red Wings and the Huskies square off as the top two seeds for the sectional championship. Let's go out to Ali Coletta with the highlights from Plainfield North. The Bennett Academy Red Wings and Naperville North Huskies find themselves matching up in the sectional final at Plainfield North. The Huskies haven't taken home a sectional plaque since 2004, and the Red Wings just took one home in 2015. North would come out with momentum early in both sets, taking commanding leads thanks to the offensive and defensive efforts of the Kushner sisters. But Bennett's serving would give the Huskies some difficulty. On top of that, junior Olympic star and Red Wing libero Hattie Monson was all over the backcourt making great saves, helping Bennett take the two-set victory 25-21, 26-24, and move on to the Super Sectionals. That's it from Plainfield North. Stephanie, back to you. Thanks, Allie. Best of luck to the Red Wings. And finally, it was another dominating performance for the North Central College men's cross-country team at the CCIW Conference Championship. The Cardinals won their 45th consecutive conference title and had the top nine finishers in the race. Drewville Patel was the individual champion as NCC remains the number one team in Division III. The North Central woman also put up a strong showing, finishing in second place as a team behind Wheaton College. Madeline Scott and Diane Barajas both finished in the top seven. The men's and women's regional races will be run on November 10th. That's it for sports. Kim, back to you. Thanks, Stephanie. Be sure to tune in to Naperville Sports Weekly for a huge weekend of highlights from state soccer, state cross country, and the girls volleyball super sectional. This season, your little pocket change can make a big difference for those in need. The Naperville Park District is once again collecting donations for its Pennies for Pies program. It's an annual benefit for loaves and fishes to help the nonprofit provide pies to families in need during the holidays. It's a great feel-good initiative uh, with the Park District. I know um, our employees as well as our patrons and our participants, they, they enjoy uh, being part of this. It is a small way to be able to, to give back during the holidays, um, but it certainly goes a long way with the families that uh, receive the, the pies. Collection jars are located at five Park District facilities, including the Fort Hill Activity Center, Alfred Rubin Riverwalk Community Center, and the Park District Administration Building. The Pennies for Pies collection jars are out now through November 16th. And that's what's happening right here in your neighborhood, Naperville. We'll see you next week. Until then, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, nctv17.com for daily updates. This week's Naperville News 17 is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. This program is partially funded by a grant from the City of Naperville.